GKFX Prime presents the Market Analysis Webinar. Hello traders. Hello everybody. Welcome back. As always, we have another video for you. My name is Dima. We have a week in the markets and market analysis going over some high probability charts this week. And if you're joining me for the first time, welcome. If not, then welcome back. And I will start and have a look at what we've got for the economic calendar. As always, also we'll have a little review, some of the overlapping charts from last week that carry over to this week and reanalyzing, readjusting with the market to continue on the high probability setup, adjust your view and go with what the market tells us. All right. So let's have a look at what we've got this week and where we're at. I've picked out a few charts. You're always welcome to remember to uh, like and subscribe and post your charts or ideas below if you want to have a little bit of interaction and get a review of your own setups and what you've been looking at. Right, let's begin. So Monday, <clears throat> usually the quietest day, we've got bank holiday on both from both Canada and the US. On Tuesday, there's PMI on the pound. We've got CPI numbers on the CAD and we've got PMI numbers on dollar. Wednesday is the one to pay attention to because we've got the rate statement from New Zealand and we've got FOMC. Usually that's a big, big one to watch out for on the dollar. And it's also the first day of the G20 meetings. Now G20 meetings can be a little bit unpredictable in a sense that there's no fixed time. So bear that in mind that things can happen but if you manage your risk, then you should be fine. Thursday, we've got GDP quarterly numbers on the dollar and there's a bank holiday on the yen. And again, G20 meetings, the second day of that on Thursday. And on Friday, it's a quiet day, but there is the third day of the meeting. So let's see if those three days spring up any surprises or if not, either way, the price action will be the main factor, if you've been with me for a while, you know that price action is king here. And that's what we pay attention to. So let's see where the probabilities are in our favor with the price action and what the charts are showing at the moment. <clears throat> okay. Right. Let's begin. Uh, we've got a couple of new ones from last week. Let's start with the majors always. This week I have picked New Zealand dollar. What we've got on the New Zealand dollar is we could see we had an impulse move here, just pinged above these structural highs, and we have several weeks of weakness in the New Zealand dollar. And now we haven't quite broken the low of January, the low of the current year here. So I'll be looking for that to break for the market to continue heading lower. You can see last week was a bearish move there. So here's that low just a reference point and the next reference point I'll be looking to trade into would be here and then possibly here. So this gap you see in the market, if you want to draw a fib just to make it more clear for you, is the high and you can see here's that 50% level. Here's the 61.8. So if we continue lower, I'll be looking for the market to reach into that, but that is contingent on us closing below this low over here and breaking through and what that would give us an indication of is further weakness it would look like so and any pullback and then a continuation to the downside would be this move here so that's the short idea now if we get a break above this high it would invalidate the whole idea and then we are more likely to be heading higher on New Zealand dollar than lower. So I'm going to wait for the market to tell us what it wants to do. The moment because of the weakness, the signs of weakness are more favoring the downside. Particularly with what we've got on the dollar, which is strength on dollar at the moment. So that's New Zealand dollar there. Prefer, prefer the sell side. Now let me go to another pair. Let's go to Euro Pound. So Euro Pound is what we were looking at last week. Watched for this zone for the market to bounce off that to continue on the bullishness. We had a very weak uh, week, uh, 
let me rephrase that so it's easier. We had a very, um, a sell, a sell week, a, uh, a week to short the market. So the market was very weak, let's say, in that last week. And I was looking at this zone and we broke through and then just about broke through and then had this big bullish candle to move to the upside. And I was looking to break this high, which indeed it did. And as you can see, that was a plan to go up. Now, <clears throat> We did have that bullish momentum and now we are slightly breaking down. We are in this range here. So the next thing that I'll be looking for with this situation, now that we've broken higher, it looks like we want to continue higher, is this area right here. And for the market to drop into that, give us a better price and then continue to the upside creating new swings and ultimately to this high right here. So that's what I'm seeing as the high probability scenario. In this case, now that we've got this push away, we left a gap in the price. And obviously you can see we haven't even, you could just eyeball it from here to here. We haven't even reached the halfway mark. So I'm going to wait for that retracement. And then once I get, I see that the market gives us some positive price action to the upside. That is the high probability scenario there. Okay, so the invalidation mark, as always, will be this low over here. So that will give us the idea of where the market would not be heading higher if it breaks this low. Um, the indication is that we are possibly going lower or the probabilities will just drop and not be in your favor anymore. So that's the idea on the Euro pound. The next one I'm going to move into is another pound pair, pound yen. So here we go. Let's look at the weekly. You can see the previous weeks we have been in a ranging market here. I marked out previously this area right here as somewhere to look out for. We haven't yet reached that. Let me just delete these lines just so it's much cleaner, much simpler. And yeah, as you can see, we had this consolidation phase here. We didn't break higher and only now we are doing so. So what does that mean? Let me just clear this up, right? So that it's much easier. Clear all of this up. So now that we are reaching into this area and I mark this area out as the point where we'll be interested in, you can see this back big gap in the price in the market from this extreme high to this extreme low. You can see here's the 61.8 level and I'll be looking for the market to reach higher and then reverse to the downside. So if you look on the weekly, we have this weakness then we have this ranging market and this is the kind of retracement and it's very very slow very uh, would have really created havoc for many people going up and down in this range so i'll be looking for the market to do something off here and if we get that reversal then coming lower to the downside and this should be a nice move down that's a very big juicy move there isn't it um, that's if it happens. So if that is the case, there is two ways to do it, either from here when it reverses or waiting for the move to the downside. And as ever, it pull back to a better price and then a continuation from there. Something like that. It's just a rough, rough idea. Yeah. I'm not saying that the market will do exactly that. So that's what I'm looking for on the pound yen and the weakness there and continuation of the bullishness of the strength in the yen and the strength in the yen would mean weakness for pound yen so that's the idea on pound yen let's move on to the next one we've got euro new zealand remembering we do have major new zealand news this week what do we have on new zealand well we can see that we had this impulse move up, breaking the structures, the retracement. And now this looks like it's a continuation to ultimately possibly the upside here. Last week we closed bullish. You can see that bullish candle engulfing and I'm looking for the continuation to the upside. 
continuing on that bullishness. Now, here's a break of the week before. Here's last week. And then if you want, you can draw a, a level here. So if we drop down into this level, you can see we also have, if you want to draw a fib from the low, current low to the high, you can see that here's the 50 level, a 60, 18 here or 78 will be a nice cheaper price. So if that happens, then this will be a definitely a more high probability cheaper price to get in on. And the first target would be up here. And the invalidation will be this low down here that this very bottom. Let me just delete this fib. So there you go. If we don't get that drop, then a break of this high would be the other possibility and then move higher and then a pullback as ever to a better price and then continuing to the upside. So that's the other option here, just giving ourselves some options for what the market may do. We never know and <clears throat> just act accordingly and manage your risk, of course, as always. So I'll be looking for this area right here, let me just put a marker here. Here's that area. And this will be the favored scenario for Euro New Zealand to the buy side in terms of probability. And if it doesn't do that and it breaks lower, then we're going to scrap this idea and just reassess later on when the time comes, perhaps next week. Remembering the New Zealand rate announcement this week so the volatility may begin to kick in then and that's about if i'm not mistaken that was wednesday wasn't it okay next let's have a look at the nasdaq nas 100 so this is what i looked at last time was looking for price to reach into this area we didn't have that we have been ranging last week was an inside bar so this week i'll be looking for that possible continuation to the upside at the moment we're in a range looking at last week i was expecting this area to bounce from which we did and then we went lower once again so now where are we let's reassess this situation and the situation we're in now is we are in this consolidation phase so if we are going to reach higher then the Confirmation for that would be a break of the structure highs and then a move higher, a possible pullback, and then continuing to this zone. And if it doesn't, if it actually breaks lower below this level, which is the extreme current low structure, then breaking lower and then some kind of pullback to a better price and continuing to the downside would be the the idea there so at the moment because of this consolidation because of this ranging market it's hard to tell where we're going i don't want to be acting too soon you want to see what the market tells us before jumping in before taking any making any decision so that's the analysis for nas here's what it looks like on the daily you can see it's clearly ranging and we may reach towards that we may not let's see where we go from here so need a bit of patience required we may continue ranging for another week and even two weeks no idea the market could do anything it wants to do that's where risk management comes in but if these scenarios play out then i would be more interested and the probabilities would be more in our favor okay let's move on to oil oil has been one that we've been looking at for a while hasn't it so as you can clearly see oil has been in a ranging market now for quite some time this is quite a few weeks so what is going to happen with oil well we don't know this was the area i was looking at as you can see and we have had this ranging movement on this area so now the question becomes what are we going to where we're going to go from here on oil so it's a ranging 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 we do not know and because we do not know it's a bit of a um, we have an unclear unpredictable scenario at the moment i was looking at this level here which we bounced off so it looks like we're holding this level here 
and therefore this is now becomes my reference point this low so this low if we go below this low then I'll be looking at a further breakdown and if we now if I just zoom in and I was looking at this area first of all as a bounce here this one we did not do that we didn't bounce we broke down lower now this area I was looking at as the next point we have not had a bounce here where it looks like we are wicking below and we may go lower still now if So this area is now where I'll be looking to be interested in taking a buy. And if this region, this price point breaks structure, then this whole thing will be invalidated. Now I still favor the buy scenario. So if we do get a bounce here, let's just delete the previous markings because of the overall very, very large time frame on oil, I'll be looking for the move higher. at some point then retracement and then moving higher to the top of this range now because we're in the range the probabilities are lower less in our favor and we may just get very choppy choppy price action it's been like that for many weeks so it's unpredictable as it stands and not really favoring this one for this week if i'm honest so we have to see how the price action fares the safer option would be this high up here which would be a break of significant structural area and would give us a sign that the probability is indeed to the upside but if you want to take the riskier uh, but more rewarding trade it's around here so that's the analysis on oil at the moment slightly unclear i would say so this may require a little bit more time again because of the ranging market this week could be another ranging week and we could still be within this top and bottom you see bouncing from top to bottom this is when we need to sit on our hands a bit more okay so last but not least bitcoin let's go to bitcoin so we we're expecting bullishness on the cryptos ethereum bitcoin i was looking at and what we had is a move to the downside a retracement and then we moved higher i was looking at if we just delete all of these for a minute i was looking at this area down here if you remember as a retracement on the cryptos and we have not had that yet we have pushed up from here now the two scenarios the two possibilities is of course if we do get a push down here then yes it will be a nice better price to go off from and then continue to the upside but if that does not happen and we continue reaching higher at the moment we've got a higher high then higher price breaking clearly breaking this structure high It's a bit tricky sometimes to get this right there's that structure high so a break of that and then a pullback oops let me just make it clearer pull back and a continuation to the buy side for a nice better price would be the idea here let's see how it fares uh, we really want to see some more <coughs> more uh, stronger price action clearer price action at the moment looking on the weekly we did have that bullish momentum breaking this higher right here so the favoring favoring the buy side really on bitcoin there and let's see where it plays out at the moment it's neither here nor there because we are not quite broken through this high and in the long term we are in this you can see this range right here so if i zoom out go to the weekly or the monthly might be clearer here in this range so really want to break out of that range and head higher before confirming the buy side and a move lower would signify a nice uh, better price it would be worth the risk so the probability would be in 
our favor a little bit more there. So at the moment, bullish on Bitcoin. So those are the charts for this week. Hope that helps you out and gives you a little bit of clarity. It's just the way that I'm looking at the moment. It's just a uh, one kind of analysis. Always manage your risk and watch out for the news announcements, the economic calendar, as always, that could um, more likely than not sink in with some volatility in the market. So uh, watch out for that if you are trading, placing a trade before that. Factor that in to your setups and to your trades. And for now, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next week, as always, with some more setups. And I'm going to choose another few high probability charts to trade. All right. Have a good trading week, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay. Bye for now.